Hello and welcome to It's Only Electric. This is the newly updated 2024 Volkswagen ID3 Pro Performance, Volkswagen's smallest car in the ID lineup. So it's time to test range, consumption, acceleration, noise, and charging. So it's equipped with a smaller battery pack with a gross capacity of 62 kilowatt hours and a net capacity of 58 kilowatt hours a VLTP range of up to 431 kilometers, but that's with a smaller rim. So this one is equipped with the 19 inch wheels. So that actually takes away four kilometers from the initial WLTP range. So this specific car has a WLTP range of 427 kilometers. It should be able to do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.4 seconds and it has a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour so the updated version has slightly higher efficiency and that's not due to the drivetrain because the drivetrain is, is exactly the same it's due to a bit lowered drag coefficient and the reason for the lower drag coefficient is the redesign of the bonnet here at the top there's no longer a plastic spoiler instead of that they have raised the actual bonnet a bit you can see that here on the side i don't know what you think about it does it look better does it look more ugly or strange i'm not sure from the front i think it looks good from the side i think this profile looks a bit strange the other change that actually reduces the drag coefficient is the new designed front spoiler that's a bit more aerodynamic than the old one and, and now has a bit rounder shaped front with air intakes on the sides going into the wheel arches. Charging can be done in a top speed of 120 kilowatts. That's the fast charging, DC charging. And when it comes to home charging, AC charging, it has three phase support and a top speed of 11 kilowatts. So normal, fairly decent charging speeds not that much to brag about and they are actually the same as before the update but i'm going to test the charge speed and see what it can achieve enough of talking let's start with the range and consumption test the test as such is a test i do for all the cars i i borrow and test and review it's a test cycle, 80 kilometers long, with mixed speeds between 50 kilometers per hour all the way up to 110 kilometers per hour. Average speed is 93 kilometers per hour. So it's more or less a everyday driving condition test. It will give you a good understanding of the actual range of the ID3. Uh, so uh, I hope this will give you some good information. To be able to create a consistent and comparable result with all the other cars I have tested, I always stick to certain rules. Rule number one, AC is set to auto and 20 degrees. Rule number two, dry mode is set to eco when possible and there is a dry mode called eco in this one, that one limits the AC too. And the last rule, always stick to the speed limits, current speed limit 110 kilometers per hour. I have been driving 22 kilometers and the current average consumption is 17.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. I think that's still a decent uh, consumption given the conditions and uh, I think this car will be able to score a good range but let's see about that. I will check in again soon. This is kind of a base version of the Volkswagen ID3. This specific car is equipped with uh, the IQ light, the light package. That means that you get LED lights for the front, smart LED lights, the light bar uh, on front of the hood, and also the LED lights at the back. Other than that, it seems to be fairly standard, but the price of this car is 479,000 Swedish crowns or 44,000 euros approximately. Entry price of this car is 440,000 Swedish crowns or 40,000 euros in Germany. And it's a bit hard to compare because the German base version actually comes with less equipment. It's a bit more expensive than that when you compare apples to apples. But it's still not a very low starting price. I mean, you don't get that much of equipment 
on the base version so there's a lot of add-ons to the car and it gets really expensive if you start adding things uh, and if you add too much you will end up paying the same price as you do for a Volkswagen ID4 for instance and that doesn't really make sense because that's a, a lot bigger car uh, and comes with a bit more equipment as a standard so what I want to say with that is I think the price of this car is a bit too high to be able to attract consumers currently, especially here in Europe. I know they have been lowering the price a lot in, in China, for instance, to, to, sell, to be able to sell this car. And I think they need to do the same thing here in Europe. I think the entry level price of the ID3 should match the entry level price of the Volkswagen Golf to be able to attract more customers and make sense for the European customers. And that means that they need to lower the price with 50,000 Swedish crowns or 5,000 euros to make more sense. I don't know, that would probably not happen uh, now, hopefully in the future. In the main competitor to this car is probably the uh, MG4. That car has the same horsepower, the same torque, the same performance as this one has. And also the same range if you go for the entry level better on this one. Same size, same practical aspects to the cars, but the price difference is 10,000 euros or 100,000 Swedish crowns. I think that's a too big of a price difference. But what do you think about the pricing and the offering of the ID3? Is it too expensive compared to the competition? Which car would you choose? Would you go for the ID3? Would you go for the MG4 or something else in the segments? Let us have a discussion in the comments below. So very soon hitting the halfway, 40 kilometers. Average consumption until now, 16.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. I mean, that's good given the conditions. I assume it will drop a bit more, but let's see about that. So let's look into the numbers for the range and consumption test. The average consumption ended up at 16.0, so 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers flat. That actually equals to a total range or the full battery pack of 362 kilometers. If you compare that to the state the WLTP range with this rims and this setup of 427 kilometers, that's actually 85% approximately of the state the WLTP range. Uh, and I think that's fairly okay given the conditions with damp roads and uh, mild winter conditions, I would say. And running on the R19, the 19 inch wheels with uh, studless winter tires of the brand Nokia and Hakapelita R5. I think that's what you can expect around that ballpark in better conditions during summer, dry roads and higher temperatures. I think you can be able to achieve 400 kilometers. You can probably add 30 to 35 kilometers on my tested range in perfect conditions. Let's move on to the acceleration test. Okay, so the first zero to 100 test, state of charge 89%, seven degrees outside, sports mode active, a bit damped roads. Let's go. zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.26 seconds and zero to 60 not sure doesn't say anything yeah zero to 60 in 6.85 seconds go come on this takes some time zero to 60 miles per hour time 6.80 seconds Zero to 100 kilometers per hour time, 7.22 seconds. Okay, so zero to 100, 7.22, zero to 60 miles per hour in 6.8. That's better than the specified 7.4 seconds. And this is the second attempt, and both results are showing the same thing. So let's do a last try, and then I think it's fine. So let's go for a final try. State of charge, 87%. Go. Miles per hour time 6.80 seconds. Zero 
to 100 kilometers per hour times 7.20 seconds. Yeah, so 7.20 and 6.80 in 0 to 60 miles per hour. Good, 0 0.2 seconds quicker than the specified time. So that's the acceleration tests. I did a couple of runs. So the best time I achieved during these runs was 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.2 seconds and 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.8 seconds. The stated 0 to 100 time of this specific car is 7.4 seconds. So 0.2 seconds quicker than the specified time by Volkswagen. And that's on state of charge around 88, 87%. So can be considered good. Uh, it delivers what we expect even a bit better. Let's look into the cabin noise. And just for your information, I'm always measuring the cabin noise the same way in all the cars I test. I place the microphone at the headrest height on the passenger side, and I'm always driving the same cycles, the same stretch of roads and the same speeds. So I'm measuring four different speeds, 50, 70, 90, and 110 kilometers per hour. So compared to other cars, let's start with the Renault Megane E-Tech. This one is a bit more silent. I have tried that before. And as you see here, it's a bit more noisy than, than the ID3. And compared to other cars with the exact same tires, Nokia R5 Hakapalita tires, uh, we can look at the uh, Neo ET5 sedan version. That car actually has wider tires, but still a bit lower cabin noise. Other cars in or around the same ballpark is the Ionic 5, for instance, almost the same noise level as this one has. So there you have something to compare it with. So now it's time to look at the charging. This is always interesting because you never know what the car is going to deliver in this case. This is one of the parts that's the most unpredictable parts when it comes to electric cars. Updated ID3 actually has a updated speed. So it went from 100 to 120 kilowatts when it comes to DC charging. Uh, so I wanted to test that. But sadly, I wasn't able to, because uh, the car Colgates, the car Colgates in a really aggressive amount, really surprises me, because I mean, I own a ID3 myself. I don't charge it that much on long trips, because I rarely take it to long trips, because I have the Model Y uh, besides the ID3. So the ID3 is more the commuter car, uh, and it's mostly charged at home in the garage. We have done some fast charging sessions during summertime and then it really delivers good charge speeds. I've been able to, to get out one, over 125 kilowatts as a peak power with that car. So it charges good. This one though, the maximum speed I was able to achieve was actually 69 kilowatts of charge power. That's really not impressive. I mean, it was seven degrees outside. I warmed up the car for almost half an hour of driving, a lot of accelerations, some highway driving, etc. So the battery pack should be heated enough. But the problem is that the battery preheating system doesn't seem to warm up the battery more than to like 13 or 14 degrees then it stops because that's enough for the driving because I had the full power, the full region available on the screen whilst driving. So the battery was warm enough to deliver all the power and also to take back all the region that's possible with this car. So a bit surprised that it's cold gating that much in such high temperatures. So I was at least expecting speeds around 100 but no, this seems to be a tough problem for the ID owners. At the same charger, when I just finished charging this car, I met a taxi driver with a Skoda Enyaq with a big battery pack, the ADX, I think it was. And he was really angry because I asked him, what kind of speeds do you get on this charger? He said, the charger doesn't matter because I never get more than 80 kilowatts of peak charge power during this time of year. And it doesn't matter. I can drive the whole day and it still doesn't give me a decent speed. And it actually also confirmed this issue that I just experienced about cold gating. And I know that Volkswagen is going to deliver a proper preheating functionality into the software uh, very soon. 
This car is running software 3.5 and I've heard that uh, in software 4.0 they are delivering the preheating functionality and that means that the heating system, the heat system of 6 kilowatts should be able to warm up the battery to optimize uh, and, and to create the optimal charge speed instead of just uh, heating it for be able to drive it properly also for charging it properly i'm not sure though if that update is coming to to the current cars all or the sold cars or if it's for newer platforms for the id7 for instance i'm not sure uh, but i really hope that current customers can get better charge speed during winter time i mean this is not even a winter it's a mild winter seven eight degrees the battery should be able to get charged a lot faster than this maximum peak power of 69 kilowatts. Really not impressive and I'm a bit surprised. It took me four to five minutes to charge the car from 10 to 80% and I mean it's a small battery pack. I hope to be able to see better charging conditions and better software for this car in the future. Let's hope so, at least for all the current owners. So that's it, we have been looking at the range and consumption, the noise, acceleration and the charging. This is four of the most important aspects for you as a person looking for a decent electric vehicle. I mean, all in all, I think this car delivers on most of its purposes. I mean, it's a small car, at least on the outside, but on the inside, it really delivers big volume. And that's what electric cars partly is about. I mean, building cars differently to create better conditions, better comfort, better dynamics and practicality than on traditional combustion engine platforms. Because you get a lot of new opportunities on new platforms. And on that level, I think Volkswagen has really delivered because the interior space on this car is really good. You have decent boot space, you have good interior space, a decent back seat for such a short car. And that's really good. So you can use it on a lot of things. And if you choose the car with a big battery pack of 82 kilowatts of gross capacity, you can also use it on really long trips because that's one of few cars in that car segment or the only car in that segment with such a big battery pack and such a great range of 570 kilometers. That's really impressive. So if you want a smaller car with long range, that could really be a car for you. But keep in mind that those cars that still not have a proper preheating of the battery pack. So during winter time, you will really suffer if you need to charge quick because you won't be able to do it if the car isn't hot enough, I think you need to drive up the battery to at least 30 degrees to be able to crank out the maximum charge power. And if you miss that, you can from now on be a member of my channel, a It's Only Electric Backer. That means that you help me to create more content by joining and paying for a membership, 29 Swedish crowns, two and a half euros a month. And what you get for that is unique emojis, priority on answering messages. Uh, also, the best perk is that I pre-post videos on that membership channel on forehand. So you get access to content before everyone else uh, and also get the opportunity to comment and engage in an early stage. So otherwise, watching the videos, subscribing to my channel, giving it thumbs ups, is also a very good way of supporting what I do. Keep doing that and always keep engaging. Don't stop doing that. And as I always say, stay electric. Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon.